remember last year, I posted a tutorial on how to make a Kinex motor assembly, which was an assembly I created out of Kinex that would turn on a Kinex motor. But unfortunately, there were a few major drawbacks to that technique. The first was that despite my best efforts, it still took a lot of force to get the Kinex motor to actually turn on. You would have to put a golf ball on a ramp that was almost at a 45 degree angle to even have a chance. The second was that even with enough force from the golf ball hitting the tire on the top, sometimes the Kinex rod would slip out from the contact point with the switch, and then fail to turn on the motor at all. The other major problem was that it wasn't very customizable. If you wanted to use this technique, you would have to have the motor at that specific height, and you would have to have a rod rotating parallel to the table. But the main problem with this method turned out to be the method itself. As Donald Drake Machines pointed out, I was using what he calls a hammer and nail activation system which is where you take a large amount of force and try to concentrate it on a small surface area. And that was exactly what I was trying to do. I was trying to concentrate the large amount of force that comes from a golf ball onto the very small surface area of the end of a Kinex rod. Speaking of Donald Drake machines, he has also made a tutorial for how to turn on a Kinex motor. And instead of using a hammer and nail activation like I did, his method is lever based. In fact, Donald Drake actually inspired me to revisit my old and inefficient Kinex motor assembly and completely redesign it using a lever-based system. And just like last time, I wanted to do it using just Kinex pieces. And in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to build what I came up with. All right, so I bet you guys are really curious now to see what this final product looks like. Well, let's bring it in. Now before I teach you how to build it, I want to go through what it does and how it works. So as you may have guessed, the main operation for the motor is this large red rod sticking out the back. That's how you turn the motor on. But it also has two other functions, turning the motor off and making it rotate the other way. To turn on the Kinex motor, push the rod to one side. To turn it back off, push the rod back to the middle. And to make the Kinex motor rotate in the other direction, push the rod to the other side. There is one of these pieces at the end of that orange connector, and the Kinex motor switch actually fits perfectly in between those two pieces at the end. And that's really great because it allows me to do this. So here are all the parts that you'll need for this model. Again, these are pretty normal parts, none of them are particularly rare, so if you've got a bucket of Kinex around, chances are you have most of these pieces. One thing I would like to point out, however, is that you do need a lot of these black pieces, and as you've already seen, it plays a very crucial role in this model. So if you don't have them already, I highly suggest going to Kinex.com and picking up a few. They're very cheap and extremely useful, and here's just another reason why. Unlike last time, I'm not going to go through a full list of all the pieces you'll need in the video. If you need to, just pause the video and count them. Just in case though, I have put a list of all the pieces you'll need in the description below. But now, let's get on with the moment we've all been waiting for, the actual building process. Also, instead of painstakingly building this model one piece at a time like I have in the past, I'm going to be building it in these five different sections. And I'm also going to be doing it a little bit quicker, because obviously with the video, I don't really see the need to narrate where every single piece is going. It'll be more like a, this piece goes here, that piece goes there, this one goes next to this one type of thing. These are the pieces you'll need for this section if you want to go ahead and collect them ahead of time. So the first thing you're going to do is take two of these blue pieces and put a green rod in the middle of them, connecting them like this. Then you're going to take two more, put them in on each side, and then take two white rods, stick them coming out this way, then you're going to take another blue one and place it with the slot facing outwards. Do the same thing on the other side. Connect them with a, another green rod. Snap in the purple connector. Again on each side. And then add two more white rods. And then finish it off with a vertical uh, purple connector. This time with the slot facing downwards. And then the two final blue connectors. And then obviously connected with a green rod. The next thing you're going to do is take one of the yellow rods and put four light blue spacers on it. And then you're going to take two of these black pieces and stick them in the top 
connector, con a top opening of the purple connectors, and then stick the yellow rod in them like this. Separate the, the spacers into two on each side. Put two more black pieces vertically. And there should be just enough space in the middle left for you to put an orange piece going up vertically. And when you're finished, this is what you should end up with. Again, here are the pieces you'll need for the next module if you want to collect them ahead of time. This one is basically two of the same thing, so we'll do one and then you can just do another one the same way. So we're going to take a white full circle connector, place one blue rod at the top, one yellow connector opposite from it, and then one red connector one spot away from the yellow one. Once you've done that, take the small gray connector and slide the hole onto the blue connector at the top. And then you're done. Just make another one. And there you go. You're done. The next module is the easiest of them all, and if you want to collect the pieces ahead of time, these are the ones you'll need. Okay, so to do this one, just put two red connectors like this, and then put one in the middle, one uh, green rod that is, and then one on each side. And then you're done. The next section is the last section, so you'll need all of your remaining parts except for the motor, but here they are anyway. So first you're going to take the yellow connector and put a yellow rod into the bottom section of it, and then you're going to take two of the blue rods and snap them in like this on each side. And then on the end that's shorter, you're going to take a light blue spacer, followed by a blue end cap on the end like that. And you're going to do this on both sides. Once you've done that, you're going to take two of the green connectors, or green rods rather, and put them in on each side down there. And then you're going to put the red connectors down there as well. And then you're going to snap in two more blue rods, slide them in the same direction as these up top. As you can tell, this model is kind of strange. So now it should look like this. And then finally, you're going to take the orange straight connector, slide it up to about this position. It won't be exact, and we'll adjust this later. But then put one of these black pieces on each side just to keep it in position. Again, we'll adjust this later. Finally, put the long red rod on one end of the black, or one end of the uh, orange connector, and the other final black piece on the other end. So now this whole thing should look like this. All right, now that we have all of the sections assembled, it's time to put all of them together. So we're going to start with the motor, and we're going to place it vertically with the switch facing out. Then we're going to grab these two pieces, and we're going to place them just like this with the red rod facing diagonally and towards the switch. So just like this. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. All right, so now that we have this, we're ready to attach it to the base. So we're going to get out our base, and the base is completely symmetrical except for these two on over here, which are designed to accept these two red rods. So those go over there. And the yellow ones connect over here. So now things get a little bit more difficult. So the last thing we have to do is connect this weird structure. So the first thing you want to do is take the bottom part of the yellow rod and stick it into the orange connector. The second thing you want to do is adjust where the orange connector meets the switch. So mine appears to be a bit low, so I'm going to slide it up so that it contacts where it should. See that? Then you're going to take these 
these blue pieces and connect them to the white connector on both sides. And then do the same with these up top. At this point, the connection should be strong enough that this will turn on the switch effectively. Sounds good. Even though the switch works right now, we still want to add a little bit more security to make sure that these parts don't come undone in the back. So to do that, we're going to take our final segment, segment here and connect it to the back, just like that. So there you go. You're done. So once again, this is what the entire completed model should look like. And if you've made it this far in the video, congratulations! I hope to see this technique in your machine sometime soon. But before you go quite yet, I do want to talk about some options for customizability. Near the beginning of this video, I mentioned that the old technique did not have that much customizability, and that you could not adjust the height of the motor, that you could not make it rotate in any other direction other than parallel to the table. But with this technique, I have built in some ways that you could definitely change that. To solve the issue of height, you just take the entire model and turn it on its side. Now, it is a little bit crooked, but to solve that problem, you can take off this front piece because it isn't necessarily essential to the functionality of the model. It's just there for extra security. Now, it stands level. But to elevate this motor to a medium height, say about here, all you have to do is add a couple rods underneath at all the connection points. And there you go. To make the motor rotate perpendicular to the table, simply replace this red piece with a white piece. And add another white piece on top here. Then rotate the entire structure 90 degrees. But what if you wanted it rotated perpendicular to the table and elevated a little bit? Well, you can do that as well, because now you can just add four more supports to the bottom of this. And there you go. But perhaps the most important customization option that you have is what to use as the actual switch that turns on the motor. This is the one that we built in this model, but by varying the length of the rod and the type of connector that you use, you can create pretty much any type of switch you would need for pretty much every situation. All right, now it's time to take a look at some different ways that you can use this model in your own machines while taking advantage of all of the things that it can do. That's it guys, I hope you thought this tutorial was helpful. If you did, leave a comment down below telling me what you thought. And as always, the most important thing you can do is actually build this model. And if you do, I want to know about it. So leave a YouTube comment here on this video or message me on Twitter, at JOAS98Machines. Any way you do it, I want to see it. So get to building. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.